Howdy. This is Lemmy from Zilla TV, here to talk to you today about SNS camshafts for Harley. You should be considering a camshaft for your Harley if you are looking to make a little bit more power or perhaps move the power in your power band. SNS is currently making something for just about every single bike made in the last 50 years. Whether you're on a twin cam, a blockhead, if you're rocking something as old as a shovel or a pan, SNS has something for you. Use our bike finder, we're going to show you the stuff that fits your motorcycle. Installation on these is three beards. This stuff is difficult. If you've never done internal motor work before, you're definitely going to want to have at bare minimum a friend with you and probably a service manual as well. Let's get right into things. So this video is going to be pretty serious. Most of mine are pretty humorous. We joke around, we laugh, yada, yada, yada. This is dry stuff. The only people who are going to be interested in this are serious gearheads. So if you're kind of a man eh, just watching for the fun of it, you might want to exit now. This is going to get really heavy. For those of you who are super nerd gearheads, stay tuned because we got a lot to cover. Camshafts, for those of you who are not super educated on them, really are the things that move your push rods, activate your rockers, and open up your valves. Now camshafts are an important part of an engine because realistically, how long that valve opens for, how far open it winds up getting, and how long it overlaps while the other valves are doing their thing control all sorts of characteristics and behavior of your bike. The cam really can change the personality of a motorcycle. So you should be looking into a camshaft really if you've done all of the bolt-on stuff already. You have an exhaust, you have a high flow air cleaner, you have either modified your carburetor or you have tuned uh, your fueling system. You are running out of bolt-on options. At this point, if you need more power, you need to start doing engine work. Cams are a great place to start. I think it's the step that most people take after they get the bolt-on stuff done. Now related to that thought is another one. When you're considering a camshaft, the first thing you want to do is plan out your end game. You folks have heard me say it before and I'll say it again. If you want to spend a whole bunch of money buying parts that don't work well together, be my guest. You people pay my salary. However, if you want to be smart about things, you want to save yourself some labor, and you want to get the most performance for your dollar, make sure that you make your parts work together. There's nothing worse than a bunch of parts that have been conglomerated from all over the place, and maybe you even spent a ton of money on them, because what can happen is you'll have a bike that just runs poorly. I've seen some very well-tuned older bikes beat the ever-living tar out of a new bike running down the drag strip strictly because their parts were chosen carefully and things were assembled in a way that makes sense. Just keep that in mind when you're buying stuff. The other thing you want to keep in mind when you're getting ready to choose a camshaft from SNS or from anybody is be honest. You got to be honest about how you ride. As much as it sounds great to say to everybody, oh, I ride around full throttle, I ride super fast, blah, 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 that's not how the real world works. Most of us don't ride that way. For instance, a fellow on a touring bike who's constantly loaded up with camping gear, maybe he's riding too up often, he's going to need a lot different camshaft with different profile than a fellow who's zipping around and really does beat the tar out of his bike going down the track. There's nothing wrong with that. They're just different riding styles and different bikes. Take all those things into account and be honest when you're assessing your needs. Fibbing a little bit and buying too much cam because you think it might help really can end up hurting you in the long run. So I have a smattering of SNS products in front of me. I love a lot of the stuff you see up here. I want to walk you through just some of these things because there's some very basic representative items here uh, in the SNS line that I think a lot of you will find interesting. So before I get into telling you exactly what it is that I have, let me let you know firstly, SNS cams are numbered. They, they, everything has a number on it. The numbers refer to the maximum lift on that particular cam. This can be useful for comparing camshaft lifts within a given engine. So for instance, a 509 cam uh, will tell you that on a twin cam engine, you're going to have you know, uh, 0.509 inches of lift. Now, that's useful for comparing cams within the same engine family, again, within a twin cam. However, it differs be going to a different engine. So if you're comparing, say, a twin cam to an Evolution, the system is lost. It's still the exact same lift on, say, an Evolution than a twin cam, but factory those had different lifts, and remember, rocker arm ratios can be different as well. So make sure if you're comparing things just in terms of lift that you're only checking out things within the same engine family. So let's get right into a couple of the items you can see. 
Down at this end, I'm going to start with probably what is something that's going to interest most of our customers. This is a 509 chain cam kit for, uh, for a twin cam. So really, anybody who's riding a bike that's 15, year old, 15 years old or newer or so would probably be interested in a kit like this. So the 509 is a very interesting cam. This is something that's really going to be designed to be bolt-in. This is really for those of you who have a reasonably stock motor. Again, those of you who maybe have all the bolt-on stuff done to your bike, but you want just a little bit more pep and you want to move the power around just a little bit. The 509 is great. Now, this is not a camshaft that makes the biggest horsepower numbers on paper, but that's okay. Remember we were talking before about being honest about your riding style? Horsepower on paper is not necessarily the ride that you're going to be taking on your bike. If your bike makes all of its horsepower way upstairs, but you're on a bike and you ride pretty mellow most of the time, you're not accessing a lot of the power that cam is going to provide for your engine. When you use a 509 cam that has very conservative lift and duration numbers, sure, it doesn't look that great on paper, but this is going to make your bike really fun to ride in the street. You can tap into that power low in the rev range. Super cool item. And again, this is a bolt-in sort of a cam. You're not going to have to change to high lift springs your head. You're not going to have to get that crazy. This something's going to slide in. You can do this at a weekend, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So flipping over to the other end of the table, you can see we have basically the same cam kit, a 509 gear kit. So what the gear kit allows you to do is, again, still run that performance 509 cam, but while you're in there, you can also get rid of your timing chain, tensioners, shoes. Those of you guys riding twin cams, I know a lot of you have probably fouled up some parts with those. It's not Harley's strongest design, and a lot of riders elect to switch back to an older style gear-driven cam. Remove the chains, remove the tensioners, and you remove a lot of the problems that happen down in twin cam cam chests. So again, you get all the benefits with the 509 cam, but you also get to do a gear swap while you're in there. So if you have any excuse to get into your cam chest with, uh, with the 509s, this is, again, if you feel like throwing a little more money at it, you're going to be able to uh, get rid of a problem that already exists in your motor and have a little bit more fun on your bike when you get it back out. Moving over to the center here, you can see here, we're moving backwards in time as well, as well as down the table. You can see here I have a 510 cam for an Evo. So remember we were talking before about lift, maximum lift. So a 510 cam for an Evo, even though it sounds very close to the 509 cam for a twin cam, this is a crazy cam. This is a very aggressive cam. This is going to be meant for somebody who's got a jug kit. They maybe have a stroker motor. You're running a high comp sort of a setup. This is something that's going to be pretty wild. You have a lot of work to do in order to run one of these in your old blockhead. You're going to need high lift springs, and most likely those of you who are looking into a cam like this are also going to have some performance head work done. So even though numerically, again, these are close, think of this as a totally different animal. A 510 cam for an Evo is a hot, hot cam. Now again, because this is meant for a motor that's got a lot of work done to it, this is also going to provide its power way high up in the rev range, 3,500, maybe up to 6,000 RPMs or so. So you really got to beat on that bike in order to get the power out of it. So realistically, that's going to be a great choice for somebody who's maybe on a stripped down dyna or something that's really light and that you're really riding hard. Again, we talked again about cam selection. Just make sure you're choosing the right cam for your bike. Now, those of you who are hot rodding around and trying to change things aren't the only guys out there. If you have an old pan or an old shovel, maybe you're just trying to do a mild restoration. Maybe you're just trying to bring the thing back to stock, but it turns out you got into this old project bike and everything's baked in there. SNS doesn't leave you out in the cold. I have an H grind cam in my hand right here. This is a stock factory cam for a shovel head. No performance gain whatsoever. All this is is a quality replacement part for those of you who are, again, restoring an older bike. This isn't going to make your bike at all strange. You're not going to have to deviate it all from your factory service manual. This is going to provide to you exactly the same benefits that a factory cam did, only this is nice and new. You're not going to have to worry about regrinding an old cam or possibly saving something, or even worse, running a junk cam, something with pitted lobes, or perhaps scoring on it you threw the hardening. Don't worry about that. Go right to SNS, grab yourself a nice factory camshaft. So the final thing I do want to chat about too before we get right to things is the installation kits that they offer. You can see here, um, this is for instance a twin cam installation kit. These things include a lot of stuff. You've got all your bearings ready to rock and roll here, cam bearings, cam gasket. All the stuff you need to do the job is going to be in these installation kits. They make a really nice add-on for those of you who are looking for a cam because they're going to save you from having to remember all the little parts you're going to buy. SNS takes care of that for you right down to some pretty cool stuff. For instance, right here we have the uh, hydraulic tensioner block off plates for those of you who do convert to a gear drive kit. This is something you're thinking about. They know you need to fill those holes. They provide something for you. Two different flavors of Loctite. Those of you who are a little bit nerdy, you recognize it's more than just red and blue. There are actual formulas that need to be used in certain places. SNS knows this too. They include this stuff for you in the kits. 
So moving on to installation itself, we talked about what's included in the kits. Let's talk about the actual job itself. I'm not gonna lie to you, installing a camshaft is a little bit difficult. It's not impossible. Home mechanics have been doing this for years and years and years. I'd say it's probably a little bit easier to perform on a single cam motor than a twin cam, but it's not impossible either way. A couple things you do wanna keep in mind. Service manual, absolute must. You have to have a service manual to do this job correctly. You are also probably going to wanna to have some precision measuring instruments. Set of feeler gauges, again, probably a bare minimum to get this job done depending on what it is that you're working on. You don't wanna eyeball this stuff. This is internal motor components. You can botch some stuff up if you are not careful with your installation. Now having said all that, if you use lots of assembly lube, follow your manual carefully, follow the SNS directions as well, this really is a rewarding project. You don't spend that much time down there in your engine. Really, you should be able to get this done in an afternoon, and you have a lifetime of fun ahead of you once you throw one of these cams in your bike. I throw in a cam in just about every single Harley Big Twin I have ridden on, and I really, really like them. I mean, whether you're just doing something for low RPM, just a little bit more grunt, or you do really want something crazy, some screamer camshaft, it's just a ball to get on a bike that has had a little bit of work done to it. I love SNS products. I use them on every single bike I build or buy. My opinion is not the only one that matters though. Click below, see what some other riders who are already rocking an SNS cam and their bike have to say about it. If you've got some fitment questions, you need help deciding which cam might be right for you, definitely get in touch with one of our gear geeks. See us at revzilla.com, we'll get you one by email. You can always give us a jingle on the telephone, 877-792-9455. I'm Lemmy, I'm out of here.